Hello and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches the Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations to give us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence and enlighten you and may be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's Torah portion is, and I'm not going to try the Hebrew because I know I'm going to mess it up, is Sarah's life. Torah is Genesis 23, 1 through 25, 18. Prophets is 1 Kings 1, 1 through 31. Our Brit Hadesha is Matthew 2, 1 through 23, 27, 3 through 10. Luke 9, 57 through 62. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 57. Genesis 23, 1 through 25, 18. Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died at <coughs> Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham, <coughs> sorry. and Abraham went in to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham rose up from before his dead and said to the Hittites, I am a sojourner and a foreigner among you. Give me property among you for a burying place, that I may bury my dead out of sight. And the Hittites answered, answered Abraham, Hear us, <coughs> my lord, you are a prince of Elohim among us. Bury your dead in the choice of our tombs. None of us will withhold for, from you his tomb to hinder, from, hinder you from burying your dead. Abraham rose and bowed to the Hittites, the people of the land. And he said to them, If you are willing that I should bury my dead out of sight, Hear me and entreat me, <coughs> entreat for me, Ephron, the son of Zohar, that he may give me the cave of Mephpelah, which he owns. It is at the end of his field for the pri full price. Let him give it to me in your presence as property for a burying place. <coughs> now Ephron was sitting among the Hittites, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham, the hearing of in the hearing of the Hittites, of all who went in at the gate of his city. No, my lord, hear me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. In the sight of the sons of my people, I give it to you. Bear your dead. Then Abraham bowed down before the people of the land, and he said to Ephron, in the hearing of the people of the land, But if you will hear me, I give the price of the field, accept it from me, that I may bury my dead there. And Ephron answered Abraham, my lord, listen to me. A piece of land worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? Bury your dead. Abraham listened to Ephron, and Abraham weighed out for Ephron the silver that he had named in the hearing of the Hittites. 400 shekels of silver, according to the weight current among the merchants. So the field of Ephron and Machpelah, which is west of Mamre, the field with the cave that was in it, and all the trees that were in the field throughout its whole area, was made over to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the Hittites, before all who went in at the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Mechpelah, east of Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. The field of and cave that is in it, were made over to Abraham as property for a burying place by the Hittites. Now Abraham w was old and well advanced in years, and Yahweh had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said to his servants, the oldest of his household, who had charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh, that I may make you swear by Yahweh, the Elohim of heaven and Elohim of earth, that you will not take a wife, for my son, from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but will go to go to my country and to my kindred and take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Perhaps the woman 
may not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I then take your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham said to him, See to it that you do not take my son back there. Yahweh, the Elohim of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and who spoke to me and swore to me, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son whom from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine. Only you must not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, took all sorts of choice gifts from his master, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. And he made the camels kneel down outside the city wall, outside the city by the well of water at the time of evening, the time when the women go out to draw water. And he said, O Yahweh Elohim, my master Abraham, of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the young woman to whom I shall say, Please let it, please let down your jar that I may drink, and who shall say, Drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar on her shoulder, and the young woman was very attractive in appearance, a maiden whom no man had known. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please give me a little water to drink from your jar. She said, Drink, my lord. And she quickly let down her jar upon her, ha her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. So he quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again, again to the well to draw water. She drew it for all his camels. The man gazed at her in silence to learn whether Yahweh had prospered his journey or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets, four arms weighing ten shekels, and said, Please tell me whose daughter you are. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. She added, We have plenty of both straw and fodder and room to spend the night. The men bowed his head and worshipped Yahweh and said, Blessed be Yahweh, <clears throat> the Elohim of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness towards my master. As for me, Yahweh has led me in the way of the house of my master's kinsmen. <clears throat> then a young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. <clears throat> Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban. Laban ran out toward the men to the, to the spring. As soon as he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's arm and heard the words of Rebecca and his, Rebecca, his sister. Thus the men spoke to me. He went to the man and Behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. He said, Come on in, O blessed be Yahweh. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man came into the house and unharnessed the camels and gave straw and fodder to the camels. And there was water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. The food was set before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have said what I have to say. He said, Speak on. <coughs> So he said, I am Abraham's servant. Yahuwah has greatly blessed my master, and he has become great. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male servants and female servants, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old. And to him he was given all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell. But you shall go to my father's house and to my clan and take a wife for my son. I said to my master, Perhaps the woman will not follow me. But he said to me, Yahweh, before whom I have walked, will send his angel 
with you and prosper your way, and you shall take a wife from my son and from my clan and from my father's house. Then you will be free from my oath, and when you come to my clan, and if they do not give her to you, you will be free from my oath. I came today to the spring <coughs> and said, O Yahweh, the Elohim of my master Abraham, if now you are prospering the way that I go, behold, I am standing by the spring of water. Let the virgin who comes out to draw water, to whom I shall say, Please give me a little water from your jar to drink. And who shall say, to, who will say to me, Drink, and I'll draw for your camels. And let her be the woman whom Yahweh has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came out with her water jar on her shoulder, and went down to the spring and drew water. I said to her, Please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulders and said, Drink, and I will give your camels a drink also. So I drank, and she gave the camels drink also. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and bracelets on her arm. Then I bowed my head and worshipped Yahweh and blessed Yahweh, the Elohim of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way, to take the daughter of my master's kinsman for a son. Now then, if you are going to show steadfast love and faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Liban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing that has come from Yahweh, we cannot speak to you bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before you. Take her and go. And let her be the wife of your master's son, as Yahweh has spoken. When Abraham's servant heard the, their words, he bowed himself to the earth before Yahweh, and the servant brought out the jewelry of silver and of gold and garments and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave to her brother and to her mother costly ornaments. And he and the men who were, who were with him ate and drank, and they spent a the night there. When they arose in the morning, they, they, he said, Send me away to my master. Her brother and her mother said, Let the young woman remain with us a while, at least ten days. After that she may go. But he said to them, Do not delay me, since Yahweh has prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. They said, Let us call the young woman and ask her. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will go. So they sent away Rebekah their sister and her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men, and they blessed Rebekah and said to her, O oh, sister, may you become thousands of tens of thousands, and may your offspring possess the gate of those who hate him. Then Rebekah her young, and her young women rose and rode on the camels and followed the men. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had turned from Beer Lahai Roy and was dwelling in the Negev. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field toward the evening, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, there were camels coming. And Rebekah lifted her eyes, lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from the camel, and she said to the servant, Who is that man walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. She, she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into the tent of Sarah, his mother, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Abraham took another wife, whose name was Keturah. She bore to him Zimrah, Jachshin, Mida, Midian, Ishbak, Shua. Joshin fathered Sheba and Dedan. Dedan. The son of Dedan were Ashram, Letushim, Limim, the sons of Midian were Epha, Ephra, Hanak, Abida, Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. Abraham gave all he had to Isaac, but to the sons of his concubines Abraham gave gifts. And while he was still living, he sent them away to his son Isaac, eastward to the east, eastward to the east country. These were days of the years of Abraham's life. One hundred and seventy-five years. Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age. And the old man, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Isaac and Ishmael, his sons, buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron. 
the son of Zohar, the Hittites, east of Memory, the field that Abraham had purchased from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife, with Sarah, his wife. After the death of Abraham, Isaac blessed I Elohim blessed Isaac his son, and Isaac settled at Beer Lahai Roy. These are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian Sarah's wife bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael, named in the orders of their birth. Neboeth, the son of Ish, the firstborn of Ishmael, and Kidur, Abil, Mids, Mibsim, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jator, Nafish, and Kedema. These are the sons of Ishmael, and all their these are their names by the villages and by their encampments. Twelve princes among them. Twelve princes according to their tribes. These are the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years. He breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. They settled from Hebala to Shur, which is opposite Egypt in the direction of Assyria. He settled over against all his kinsmen. 1 Kings 1, 1 through 31. Now King David was old and advanced in years. Although they covered him with clothes, he could not get warm. Therefore his servant said to him, Let the young woman be sought for my lord the king. And let her wait on the king and be his servant. Let her lie in your arms. May the lord the king, that may lord the king, may be warm. So they sought for a beautiful young woman throughout all the territory of Israel and found Abishag the Shumanite. And brought her to the king. The young woman was very beautiful. And she was of service to the king and attended to him. But the king knew her not. Now Adoniah, uh, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and fifty men to run before him. His father had never at any time displeased him by asking why have you done thus and so? So he was a very handsome man, and he was born next after Absalom. He conferred with Joab, the son of the Zuriel, and with Abiathar, the priest. And they followed Adonaha and helped him. But Zadok, Zadok, the priest of Benaha, the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, and Shemel, and the Rai, the David's mighty men, were not with Adonia. Adonia sacrificed sheep, oxen, and fattened cattle by the serpent's stone, which is beside Enrogel. And he invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the royal office officials of Judah. But he did not invite Nathan, the prophet of Orbani, or the mighty men of Solomon, his brothers. Then Nathan said to Be Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, Have you not heard that Adonai, the son of Haggith, has become king, of, and David, our lord, does not know it? Now therefore come, let it. Let me give you advice, that you may save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go in at once to King David, and say to him, Did you not, my lord the king, swear to your servant, saying, Solomon, your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then is Adonahas Adonia king? Yeah. Then while you were speaking with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went to the king in his chamber. Now the king was very old. <clears throat> and Abishag the Shumanite was attending to the king. Bathsheba bowed and paid homage to the king and said, King, what do you desire? She said to him, My lord, you swore to your servant by Yahweh your Elohim, saying, Solomon, your son shall reign after me. And he shall sit on my throne. Now behold... Adonia 
is king, although you, my lord, the king, do not know it. He has sacrificed oxen, fat, and cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited the, all the sons of the king, Abithar the priest, and Joab the commander of the army. But Solomon your servant he has not invited. And now, the lord, the king, the eyes of all Israel are on you to tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord, the king, after him. Otherwise, it will come to pass in when the Lord, when my Lord, the King, sleeps with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon will be counted offenders. While she was still speaking with the King, Nathan the prophet came in, and they told the King, Here is Nathan the prophet. And when he came in before the King, he bowed before the King with his face to the ground. And Nathan, my Lord, the King, my Lord, the King, have you said, Adonai shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? For he has gone down this day, and has sacrificed oxen, fat, and cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's sons, the commanders of the army, and Rathar the priest. And behold, they are eating and drinking before him, and saying, Long live King Adonia. But me, your servant, and Zadok the priest, Benai the son of Jehoiada, and your servant Solomon he has not invited. For this thing has been brought about by my lord the king and you you have not told your servants whom sit on the throne of my lord the king after him then da king david answered call Bathsheba to me so she came in to the king's presence and stood before the king and the king swore saying as yahweh lives who has redeemed my soul out of every adversity as I swore to you by Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, saying, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place. Even so will I do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground and paid homage to the king and said, My lord, King David, live forever. Matthew 2, 1-23 After Yeshua was born in Bethlehem, of Judah in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his, for we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all of Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired from them where each was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judah, so it was written by the prophet, O you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who shall shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. <coughs> and he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went, out, they went on their way, and behold the star that they had seen, when it rose up before them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going to the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and mirth. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. <coughs> And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. He sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem, and all in that region who were two years or under according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was 
was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard by Rama, weeping in loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they were no more. They are no more. When Harad died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph of Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judah in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. <clears throat> and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets may be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Yeshua was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the pre chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and betrayed innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, went out, and hung himself. <coughs> but the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them in the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price on, of him whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel. And they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. Luke 9, 57 through 62. As they were going along the road, someone said to them, I will follow you wherever you go. And Yeshua said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, let, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Yeshua said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of Elohim. The other and other said, I will follow you. But the Lord, <clears throat> I'll follow you, Lord. But let me first say for, farewell to all those at my home. Yeshua said to him, No one who puts his hands on the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of Elohim. One Corinthians fifteen fifty through fifty seven. <clears throat> I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Elohim, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twink twinkling of an eye, at the trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, <clears throat> and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must be put on the imperishable. And this mortal body must be put on the immort must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortals put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to Yahweh, who gave us the victory over <coughs> Gave us the victory through our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Bashim Yeshua. Amen.